We've had another record warm day in Sioux Falls, and it's going to remain mild tonight. Very warm. In fact, our overnight low is a record. Low of 58. It's going to be windy with that south wind holding in the heat of the day. Not as warm to the west and to the north. 34 in Aberdeen, 39 in Pier, 36 in Rapid City. You could see a few rain showers tonight, but then tomorrow looks like pretty much everybody's got at least a chance of rain. And by tomorrow evening, maybe even a few thunder showers. Not as warm. 68 Sioux Falls, 45 in Aberdeen, breezy 51 in Pier, and a windy 50 degrees in Rapid City. The weekend is also colder. We'll talk about that and look at next week in just a few minutes. Kelloland News starts now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News first at four. A meeting of Sioux Falls area superintendents. Why they came together at Good Morning Sioux Falls. Plus, a promise to do better from Excel Energy after they waited months to disclose a leak at their Monticello nuclear plants. A person has been arrested for allegedly leaking sensitive U.S. military documents online about the war in Ukraine. I'm Nicole D'Antonio at the White House with details about what's next for the suspected leaker. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Bridget Bennett. Tonight we are learning more about the unknowns in the drug black market and why it's concerning for a Sioux Falls addiction counselor. What scares me is that, so this is coming in product is coming into the state. Um, the dealers don't know what they're getting. They're distributing it. Um, uh, people that are still um, trapped in their addiction, this overwhelming urge to use to stop um, pain, to handle their trauma, to handle their anxiety, their depression, their grief, whatever reason they're using, they don't know what they're taking. Um, they don't know that this this use could be their last use. Coming up tonight on Catalan News at 6, how the 2023, the year of 2023 has been unprecedented for Gerlach and addiction counselors like him. A Governor Christy Nome is the Republican presidential candidate favored by South Dakota Republicans in the latest poll from South Dakota State University. The poll did not ask if respondents would vote for the possible candidates, but asked about their feelings towards them. Nome topped the list at 72 points out of a possible 100. It indicates whether people are warm, cold, or neutral feeling towards a particular candidate. The poll was designed around an invisible primary scenario with candidates that are both declared and undeclared. Good Morning Sioux Falls is a semi-annual event hosted by the Chamber of Commerce, shining a spotlight on important issues in the community. Well, today, education took center stage. Well, I think this event just shows that our community values education when they invite the um, leaders of the bigger school districts in the area to come in and talk and answer questions, but really showcase what's happening. Superintendents from Brandon, uh, Brandon, Harrisburg, Sioux Falls, and T area fielded questions from more than 100 community leaders. We'll touch on some of the topics that were discussed tonight on Cable Land News. Three people are in the May 16th school board election for the Sioux Falls School District, but only two will be campaigning for the spot. Candidate Nick Zachariasen um, originally entered the race to oppose Brian Madsen. Now he's choosing to stop campaigning and throw his support behind opponent Don Marie Johnson. To vote in the Sioux Falls School Board, you must be a registered voter living in the Sioux Falls School District boundaries. All right, well, let's take a look at our weather today. Another warm one, it sounds like, uh, before the rain moves in. Yeah, enjoy this one while we can. It sounds like things might change a little, Megan. Just a little bit, Don and Bridget. We did set two records in Sioux Falls today, one being our overall heat. 91 right now in Sioux Falls, so south winds are picking up at 31 miles an hour right now. In Aberdeen, 50 degrees, melting a lot of that snow that is still left. South winds at 6 miles an hour. And in central South Dakota, a little bit warmer, 59. Light winds, but you can see those clouds trying to fill in. And we do have cloudy conditions in Rapid City right now at 54 degrees. Here's a look at some of our warmest temperatures since midnight. We have broken a few records. Yankton, Sioux Falls, Marshall, Worthington, and Spencer, Iowa have all broken highs today. We do have those strong wind gusts. 44 miles an hour is our peak wind gust in Sioux Falls, Worthington, and Spencer. 
Now, due to these dry conditions plus strong winds, we are watching our fire danger with a red flag warning in those areas in pink. That does include most of Nebraska, all of Iowa and the southeast corner of South Dakota. We do have a little bit of relief on the way starting tonight and most of it tomorrow through Saturday morning where Sioux Falls could see a quarter to a half an inch of rain. We do have a marginal risk to see severe weather tomorrow night with those storms down by Yankton, Canton and Sioux City in those areas in green for hail and damaging winds. But for tonight, Sioux Falls could set another record with this overnight low of 58, 34 in Aberdeen, 39 in Pier, and 36 in Rapid City. And tomorrow, a little bit cooler, 68 Sioux Falls, 45 in Aberdeen, 51 in Pier, and 50 in Rapid City, where it will be a bit breezy along with those rain showers. We'll have a closer look at your cooler weekend in just a little bit. All right, thanks a lot, Megan. Well, almost every fire department in Monona County, Iowa, were called to assist with a large wildfire that started in northwest Iowa. Take a look at these photos. The Monona County Sheriff's Office says that three grass fires broke out in the rural area west of Moorhead. Dry vegetation and the high winds helped the fire to spread quickly across many acres of land. Crews are still working to get the fires completely under control. The large amount of snow melt and runoff doesn't come without its own set of problems. Farmers are welcoming this year's added moisture, though. Uh, the rapid snow melt has made its way into many farmers' fields, but that water can't get into the soil just yet due to some frozen soil profiles under the ground. And NDSU Extension Center's cropping specialist says farmers plan to get seeds in the ground in around four weeks, but they won't plant the normal spring crops. Instead of start planting with the small grains, it will change for corn because corn has a, lot, a short uh, period of time to planting. To deal with the excess of moisture, farmers can do that through management. Keep the soil covered, improve the infiltration through cover crops, no-till, but when we talk about flooding, I think the only, only thing I will do is pray. Overall, NDSU expects this season to be a great one for farmers, even better than last year. Well, this week, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, he signed two bills related to transgender athletes playing sports. Both bills would prohibit transgender girls from competing on girls and women's teams in high school and college. Both bills passed the House and Senate with at least a two-thirds majority. Several controversial bills are bogging down work in the Nebraska state legislature. Today, lawmakers began a second round of debate on a bill that would ban gender-affirming care for minors. It's proved to be so contentious, it's led opponents to filibuster every single bill before the Nebraska legislature since late February. Now, lawmakers entered today's debate following an all-day showdown yesterday over a bill that would restrict abortion access in the state. XL Energy now promises to do a better job of sharing information after waiting months to disclose a leak at its Monticello nuclear power plant. Company President Chris Clark testified before a panel of Minnesota state lawmakers. Caroline Cummings has the latest from the Minnesota state capitol. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. The leak at the Monticello XL nuclear plant last fall spilled over to the state capitol Wednesday. Lawmakers convened a meeting of two Senate committees to understand what happened during the November leak and why the public disclosure didn't come until March. If it had occurred, there was a current or imminent risk the public would have been informed. XL Energy says it notified the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency and the Department of Health of the leak the day it realized something was wrong, and the agencies worked with the utility in the months that followed. Kirk Kadelka, assistant commissioner of MPCA, said it's a balancing act of what information to release and when. Presenting too little information with very little detail ends up creating the potential for fear when we're not able to answer questions. Still, XL President Chris Clark acknowledged that people felt left in the dark, and he vowed to improve communication with the community going forward. And so I think as a company, one of the lessons we're taking from this uh, is to continue working with the agencies, with the city, with the county as our neighbors, uh, and determine how we can do a better job of sharing information about what 
what it, you know, about having a nuclear power plant, about what's going on at our nuclear power plants. What leaked is 400,000 gallons of radioactive tritium that, if ingested in large amounts, can increase a person's risk for cancer. But Commissioner of the Minnesota Department of Health, Dan Huff, again reassured lawmakers that there is no danger to the public. We do not have a concern for it impacting drinking water. Caroline Cummings, WCCO News. The plant just reopened on March 31st, but will power down again on Friday for scheduled maintenance, which will last about a month.